Hi everyone, my name is Cynthia. Let's talk books. Today I'm here to talk about all the books that I read in July. I read 13 books in July, which I was quite surprised by because I actually started a couple of large tomes in July and so I didn't think I was going to read this many books, but I did. So let's get right to it. The first book that I finished in July was You Made a Fool of Death with Your Beauty by Ekweke and Messi. And Ekweke and Messi is one of those must read authors for me. I will read anything and everything they write and I've absolutely loved every single book that they have published and I've read so far. Um, I haven't read every single one of their books, I have a couple left, but um, I picked up uh, their first romance novel and this was a three star read for me. So this was a book that I loved parts of it. I loved the main character. I loved the way Messi handled the topic of grief. They always do such a wonderful job with that theme. Um, and I really loved the handling of grief in this book because our main character, our heroine, um, is years after her uh, husband died and is trying to date again. Um, and so I loved how all of that was portrayed. Um, however, there's a big thing that I did not love in this book. And this is central to the main love interest, to the main couple. I, I just, it's not, it's, it's just one of those tropes that is not for me. And I'll leave it at that. <laughs> I just, yeah, I, I, and I don't, I almost did a whole video just dedicated to discussing this book, and I can't really tell you what that is uh, that I, I hate it without giving away spoilers, but if you've read this book, you know that it's a deeply messy story. It's a story about people making decisions that I think a lot of us would be like, oh no, that, that, that's a bad idea. And I did. I don't mind that, um, in it, even in my romance novels, I don't mind it as much. But I just uh, the particular plot point in this book is just something that I personally don't like. It's very personal. I don't think it was poorly written or anything like that. I just could not leave it at that but i'm not telling anybody not to pick it up if anybody wants to know what that that plot point is let me know i will give you the spoiler if you're looking for it but you can also find it online very easily this is the thing that most people are having problem um you know that most people are not liking in this book it's that one thing uh, but a lot of people are really loving it and i think the book was beautifully written um, again, I think the main character is fantastic. Um, the theme of grief is fantastic. It's just this particular plot point. The next book that I uh, finished was a recommendation from Shannon at That So Po, and it is Consumed on Colonialism, Climate Change, Consumerism, and the Need for Collective Change by Aja Barber. And this is a book that I wish I could hand to every fashion influencer, uh, the, all the ones I follow for sure. I follow a lot, and I'm not going to stop following them because sometimes I really follow people because of their personality, because I like, you know, what they show on their um, social media but this book is all about the harm that fast fashion does to the climate um to to people to economies um and how there is a real cost to shopping to constantly buying new clothes uh, and to getting them really cheap. I also really love the way Barber starts off a discussion of colonialism. That's how the book starts, about how con colonialism and capitalism shaped our fashion industry um, and continue to shape it. And I thought that was fantastic bit because it brought in a lot of history. And as a historian, of course, I just loved that. Um, there were some things in here that were not new to me. Most of us know, I think, how bad fast fashion is, but we don't know all the details of it. Um, and Barbara really very directly tells us in this book that uh, she's not going to tell us 
like okay what brands to buy from no it, it's not about that the message here is bigger and, and really more important than buy this and don't buy that no it's about really consuming less you just have to consume less and be more aware of um, what is happening how the goods get to us and, and the real damage it does not just to our climate and to our planet but also to people all over the world the next book that I finished was A Girl is a Body of Water by Jennifer Mas Masubuga Makumbi. This is one of the big books I've been reading. Um, and I loved it. I loved it. So it's set, the book is set in Uganda and it follows a young girl as she goes through like her preteen, teen, and into young adulthood. Um, and we see how she is shaped by family. A little bit by magic and traditional beliefs but uh, especially by a patriarchal world um, patriarchal world that is patriarchal both both in the traditional Ugandan traditions and also in the Euro what Europeans brought to Uganda right so it's these layers of patriarchy that really shape the opportunities that are available to our main character and uh, it was just fantastic it's fantastic it starts off a little bit slow at the beginning because you start off how she splits from herself this this will make sense it's in chapter one if you read it um and then how she seeks to control this magic that's in her but then after that the magical elements from the story really really basically disappear and you focused on like the harsh realities of this patriarchal world you don't follow her through her entire life you only go up through like young adulthood and and that like all, all the the story the narrative choices um that the author made here were just fantastic i i really enjoyed reading this one the next book I finished was Woman Eating by uh, Claire Cotta and <laughs> this is a vampire novel where the vampire is uh, Asian British. Um, I believe that uh, the mom, the main character's mom is, um, is of Asian descent and the father is um, white British. And so you have this vampire who has been brought up by her mother. Her father, it was an art, who was an artist, is dead. But the mother is a vampire and um, is deeply ashamed of the, her vampirism and her daughter's vampirism. So she has forced her daughter to live in a really closed world. The girl really only interacts with a handful of people. Um, and keeps away from the rest of society. The mom undergoes some problems. She can't die because she's a vampire, but she needs to be put in a home. And so uh, the our main character puts her mom in a home and then starts living on her own for the first time ever and is trying to explore, you know, becoming an artist and exploring the world. And the very first challenge she has to meet is feeding herself. How is she going to feed herself? She's used to her mom feeding her pig's blood that they got from a butcher shop and it was all very already part of the routine and now uh, that's not an option for her anymore. She has to figure out how to eat and so there's all these beautiful descriptions of human food and of blood so major content warning if you suffer from an eating disorder be uh, because uh, there's so much focus on food it's not disordered eating here but there's so much of that focus on food that uh, you might want to stay away from it if this is something that might be triggering for you um, but all of that along with figuring out um, new relationships new friendship how to exist in a human world when you don't know what the human world is like and you don't know what your vampirism means in this world because everything your mom told you was basically wrong <laughs> It's a short book, but it's it's deeply oh I, I need to do probably a video dedicated to this book because there's really important themes here of like outsider. Our main character is an outsider in so many different ways, not just because of her vampirism, not just because she can't eat human food, not just because she doesn't understand humans, because she hasn't interacted a ton with humans, but also because she is clearly of Asian descent. 
and and so she's othered in so many different ways here um and and the exploration of that through the vehicle of vampirism is really really cool and interesting i just really loved this book and if you can handle the content i highly recommend it the next book I finished uh, was Sister Mother Warrior by Vanessa Riley. I have a dedicated video to this book, so I will go ahead and link that in the description for anybody that is interested. This is a book set during the Haitian Revolution in which you follow uh, really two women that were really important in the lives of Jean-Jacques Dessalines, who was the first emperor of Haiti. There was a period of time here in which there, you know, uh, in which Haiti transitions from being a colony to being a democracy that you have a kind of um, uh, a more authoritarian form of government um, but you follow these women from when they were children all the way uh, uh, up until their deaths really and so you there's so many really cool themes the history handles so well the history is so so complex that the fact that Riley even tackled those themes uh, to me is already a victory because it's they're hard to even like tell like when I teach the history of the Haitian Revolution um, it's difficult I have to try to simplify it for my students when I teach it in like a survey course because we don't have a lot of time to spend on each topic uh, but it's really important history um, and so I would I just really enjoyed the way Riley did it in this book the next, next book I finished was More Than You'll Ever Know by Kate, Katie Gutierrez. And this is a kind of um, thriller mystery. It, it's told in the style of a true crime story, uh, but it's completely fictional. Uh, the author uh, starts with a, a woman who writes for a true crime blog who finds in the newspaper the story of this woman who held, like, led a double life. She had a husband in Texas uh, with two kids and a husband in Mexico. And um, it turns out that the Mexican husband comes to look for her in Texas, finds out that she's already, she's married to somebody else, um, and then he is killed. The Mexican husband is killed and uh, the Texan husband is in jail for the murder. This all sounds really interesting to our intrepid reporter and she goes to seek out this woman to tell her story. So then we have basically dual perspectives and two different timelines in the story. One in which we're following our reporter as she's unraveling what exactly happened in the life of this woman. And also going back to the 1980s and the life of this woman, how she came to be married to two men and to lead this double life. And so it's a story of like the complexities of life and womanhood. <laughs> It's also a critique of true crime and, and our obsession with true crime. Uh, the, the, uh, Gutierrez inserts the, this critique in there that I found really, really beautiful uh, because a lot of us do are, are obsessed with true crime and there's something really dark in those obsessions and in the way in which we express that kind of interest in true crime. And so that that's discussed here and and also we're unraveling the lives of these two two women i really love this book something really personal to me i don't know if any, everybody will love it as much as i did the pacing is kind of slow at times um and so not everybody's gonna like that but i liked it because in in one sense it's a kind of historical fiction novel because of the it's set in the 1980s and we get to see the earthquake in 1985 in mexico city through the eyes of one of my main, our main characters and the description of mexico in the 80s was was really interesting i was born in 1985 and i was born a month exactly after the earthquake in Mexico City and my my parents were in Mexico during the earthquake and so I've been meaning to sit down and talk to them more about that because I know my mom has mentioned it but uh, we haven't really talked about all of it and the way it now functions as like a historical period that should be studied anyway moving on uh the next book i finished was the accidental pinup by danielle uh, jackson this was a debut novel that i read an arc of i read uh an e-arc via netgalley so it was provided for free 
with no obligation to talk about it. Um, and this was this was a solid read for me. Uh, our main character, our heroine, is a photographer who does boudoir photography. And it's also, she's been trying to get into kind of more um, high fashion type of photography, but she keeps losing out to this male photographer that has a very similar aesthetic to her. But now her best friend is a fashion influencer and she has a collab with a uh, clothing company and they are going to need a photographer for the launch. And she's like, yes, this is it. finally I'm going to get the job. Well, no, they instead hire both uh, our main character and the male photographer who's been taking jobs for her. And so it's a romance novel. We know what's going to happen. Um, the, uh, there's so many cute things here. Uh, I love the way the boudoir uh, stuff is handled. Our main character is plus size and there's this discussion uh, 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 on the importance of plus size representation. But the thing that kind of kept me from really loving this book is that throughout most of the story our hero is a type of double agent. He's kind of spying on the heroine and Oh, that really, ooh, that doesn't work and, uh, at some times, uh, at some elements. Um, and then there's that moment of when, like, all the secrecy is revealed and it's kind of awkward. And um, if you can handle that kind of storyline, I think you should definitely pick it up. Um, so it didn't quite work for me, uh, but it was still a very solid, very fun read. The next book that I read was How the World, How the Word is Past, A Reckoning with the History of uh, Slavery Across America by Clint Smith. This is a fantastic book. Everyone should read it. It's a book about memory and how we have created a narrative of the Civil War and of slavery through monuments and plantations, right? Mm. How we tell the story of enslavement is really important to our understanding of ourselves, to, uh, those of us who live in the United States. But it's also really important because it is typically not told in a fully accurate way. The typical experience people have and people want at a plantation, the people that go to plantation, is a tour of the Grand Mansion and to look at the wealthy lives of the uh, plantation owners. But what we do when we only focus on those elements is we obscure how important slavery was to the wealth of this nation and to the creation of an American, a white American identity. So Clint, um, Clint Smith goes into various plantations all over the country and he tells us the story of how they tell the history, how, what kind of experience he's had on these tours. And it uh, starts off with uh, Monticello, uh, Thomas Jefferson's um, plantation, and how they've really changed a lot. I remember my college uh, professor talking about how she'd gone on a tour in Monticello and how they did not bring up Sally Hemings at all. And uh, and my teacher, uh, who was um, the professor who, who was quite uh, wanting to stir the pot, uh, would, would went on these tours and asked, what about, what about Sally Hemings? Um, and at the time, really until the 90s and early 2000s, the Monticello and Thomas Jefferson estates denied that he fathered children with, outside of his marriage, especially not with a slave woman. And then DNA testing proved that they were wrong that he did indeed have children with Sally Hemings and that um, his, there are black descendants of Thomas Jefferson. Um, and so since then, a lot has been done to try to retell the history of Thomas Jefferson and of uh, Monticello. And um, most of what uh, Smith talks about in this book was not new history to me. But I think it's the way he talks about it is so important. It's so important that it, for anybody that is interested in this history and for anybody that's going to live in the United States, if you really want to understand um, American history and and how it's evolved, how it's helped create uh, American identities, it's important you read this book. The next book that I finished was The Past is Red by Catherine M. Valente. 
and this is a book about climate change and it's a short book it's a novella uh, but it's about climate change set I don't even know how far into the future in a world in which the planet has been destroyed there humans have survived on basically islands of trash that we left behind some of this is based on truth there are islands of trash floating in our oceans and so the idea is human survive on these islands uh, and we follow a main character who is trying to make the best of it as uh, she's she keeps getting described in the description of these books as a really positive ca uh, character she's kind of happy-go-lucky but I'm not sure if she's quite uh, that I read her quite that way she is just trying to make the best out of the situation and not trying to kid herself about what the reality of the situation is um, one of the interesting plot points here is that um, they look at what I imagine to be us the people who destroyed the planet and um, and they they criticize us they they don't view us through rose-colored lenses the world is deeply affected by the way we ruined um, the planet and and they they there that is reflected in their view of us that's what first got me interested in this um, novella when uh, Sh Shannon over at that support in Poe and her husband Serge talked about this just the premise really interests me there are some content warnings here for violence there there you see some some pretty sort of graphic violence um, and um, and obviously um, climate change I I really really loved this story um, yeah <laughs> and next book I finished was A Lady for a Duke by Alexis Hall and this is a romance novel a historical romance novel in which the main character is trans um, they had enlisted in the Napoleonic Wars uh, was were presumed dead um, at um, one of the Napoleonic battles I forgot which one might have been Waterloo but one of the of those um, and the our main character took advantage of being presumed dead to fully become themselves to start living her life as a woman and uh, when the story picks up um, it, nobody except her immediate family knows that she has officially transitioned um, and now she's being forced to go to her best friend's estate and uh, what she discovers is that she's in love with her best friend and um, it's a romance novel so you know what's gonna happen um, the way the narrative evolves is is really awfully cute kind of slow at times but really cute um i, I really enjoyed watching these two people discover uh, that they're in love with one another i love the representation um and if you like historical novels uh, i think you'll really love this one the next book i finished was the change by um kirsten miller this is a story that is also told a little bit like a true crime story uh, but it's more of a thriller really uh, in which you're following three women who have reached menopause and they come into their power uh, into their magic they discover their magic i loved that by the way i love that element of it uh, but then on top of that they join forces to solve the mystery of who is killing young women in their town that's the thriller element of it and so it's not a book about like magic necessarily it's more about this like whodunit kind of kind of thriller and and i really enjoyed it <laughs> It, there is quite a bit of gender and essentialism in this book, right? It's all about women and the power women have, how women are affected by a patriarchal world, by the violence against women. And it's always women and it's always men and genders are like set. That was a bit, ugh, that was the part that, that was the weakest element in this story but if you like thrillers if you like true crime I think uh, there's a chance you might like this one 
the next book I finished was an audiobook. I've been listening to La Peste by Albert Camus in French. Um, I've already read La Peste in English and um, so I really was picking up this audiobook just so I could hear French on a regular basis. So it took me a while to get through it because I didn't listen to it sped up. I listened to it in kind of a slower um, setting so that I could just listen to the French um, and I I really enjoyed this book. I enjoyed it when I read it in English. I enjoyed it now listening to it in French. Uh, it does hit a little bit different having been in the middle of a pandemic uh, because it's all about a town in um, North Africa that um, basically is closed off because uh, the pl a plague breaks out, the plague. Um, so it does hit different. <laughs> I still really enjoyed it. And then last book I finished last night, or you know, the last day of July, I finished Valentina Salazar is Not a Mon Monster Hunter by Soraida Cordova. And it's this, it's a middle grade book in which you follow this young girl, Valentina, whose family went around protecting monsters. And the idea is not every monster is dangerous. Some monsters require protection. And um, her family did that. They went around um, helping monsters get back to their world because the idea is they come from a different world and there's these rips between the two worlds that sometimes causes uh, monsters to leak into ours. And so their job is to protect these monsters and send them back to their world. Well, um, we pick up with the family after the dad has passed away. He was killed by one of the monsters and they've been trying to live a normal life of no more monster uh, no more tracking monsters um and our main character doesn't want that she wants to go back to the way things were and so she goes on this trip trying to find a, a monster that comes up and and try to like get her family to be back the way it was before her father died and in the process of this adventure story she's unraveling how everyone in the family is keeping secrets and she's really frustrated because she's the youngest in the family and like all the adults all the all her siblings everyone's keeping secrets and um and i really enjoyed the story it was cute it handled the heavier topics really well there was a message here um it was a really sweet story so i really enjoyed it and that is it. Those are all the books that I read in July. I'm going to do a, a couple of dedicated reviews to some of these books because I realized in the process of wrapping them up that I have a lot more to say on them and I want to discuss some of their themes. But if any of these books interested um, you, if you've read any of these books, let me know down in the comments. I'd love to chat with you about them. And thank you so much for watching this video. I will see you in the next one. Bye!